Welcome to Friday Beyond Spotlight, where you can see influential and talented Hong Kong people with incomparable experience and unique knowledge from different aspects to come on our light-hearted yet informative show to help business leaders and the wider community to explore ideas, grasp opportunities across multiple sectors and see behind and beyond Spotlight so that we can make our dream bigger and achieve more together. I'm your host for this episode. My name is Herman Hu, and Friday Beyond Spotlight is honored and pleased to present to you our guest today, Professor Bian Zhao Xiang. Professor Bian is the Associate Vice President of Hong Kong Baptist University, Director and Chair Professor of the Clinical Division and Director of the Hong Kong Chinese Medicine Clinical Study Center. Professor Bian is a leading expert in Chinese medicine clinical studies a respected research scientist in the field of gut dysbiosis and a relented advocate for incorporating Chinese medicine into a holistic healthcare system. Welcome, Professor Bian. My pleasure. Traditional Chinese medicine, or we call it TCM for short, has been very common and popular among Hong Kong people and many Asian countries. It represents 5,000 years of collective Chinese wisdom However, it was not recognized by the West until recent years when more Western scientists pay attention to natural products. Professor Ben, can you give us some examples of traditional Chinese medicine practice in other countries? The Chinese medicine has been uh, developed in China and Asia for a very long time. About 300 years before that the Chinese medicine moved to the Europe, you know that, that the, in Germany, they have a Chinese medicine hospital, which has served around 30 mm. years, which is close to the Munich. They call it the Chinese uh, medicine clinic in bad coasting. And also, you know, that in the Australia, they have a national based education systems and healthcare systems. In um, Australia, they have three uh, uh, government supported university like University of IMIT, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, University of uh, Sydney Technology, and Western Sydney University. They have uh, provide the four course of Chinese medicine, which is supported by the government. And also the Chinese medicine has been registered in Australia for long times, mm -hmm. which is in combined with uh, Australia's healthcare systems. I see. Another case is um, like the uh, United States, Okay. They have uh, uh, NIH, National Institute of Health. They set up the complementary medicines, which majority is Chinese medicines, nationwide around uh, 30 national centers. So um, uh, in the United States, many uh, kinds of the Chinese medicine has been mm -hmm. provided in the United States. There are a lot of fundamental differences between Chinese and Western medicine and the approach to health. Professor Ben, can you tell us a little bit about these differences? Yeah, you, you are you are grateful the truth that the Chinese medicine and West medicine is totally different systems. We we know that the Chinese and West medicine doctor target on the same target. We are dealing with the prevention, dealing with the treatment and rehabilitation for the humans. But differently we think that the Chinese medicine, which is a holistic, which is natural and also individualized, which is totally different from West medicine in terms of, we call it uh, not a holistic, it's organ-based, it's not the uh, individualized, but a standardized, not the naturally, but it's a chemically based. So it's a totally different systems. In the West, they want to standardize everything. Yeah. And uh, this is why they said that, uh, you know, Chinese medicine is not trustworthy because you don't have a standard. But the problem is that for human disease, you cannot standardize every person's disease at the same time. That's the reason we say different people may have the different uh, characteristic, mm. they have the different uh, appetite, they have the lifestyles. The disease base is also different. So when we're treating the disease, we cannot standardize all the treatment. But uh, most of the times, like uh, we say, uh, every people can have the chance to catch a cold. But the catch a cold in each person, 
the same person may have the different. The different the same patterns that are coming from the patient's different the background, different the characteristics, different the body constitutions, different habits. Different habits. Huh? Yeah, of course, we need to treat the code. The code syndrome is a part of, like they have a running nose, mm. they have the cough, those are the stops, this is one way. But they still have some of the, the simple linking with the personality's difference, like the easily to lose the uh, weight, cannot have very good sleep, have the insomnia, mm. or very low appetite. Those are stuff is part of the condition of the disease. But if you use a standard treatment for the patient, the results will be totally different. That's mm. the way the Chinese medicine focuses on individualized versus a standardized treatment. Now, long COVID is becoming a very, very hot topic. Professor, can you tell us what kind of symptoms uh, would there be in uh, long COVID and how to overcome them? I totally agree with you. The long COVID is a big issue. I believe in that in the coming one to two decades, long COVID will be the big one or two decades. decades will be a big issue for medical field. Really? Wow, because, that long? Yeah, the long time because we, we don't know long COVID's mechanism. We still don't have the drugs that means uh, how to deal with these problems. And also the patient, they have uh, the symptoms, especially those of the long COVID were complicated with other diseases like the diabetes, like a cancer, like hypertension. I understand that, uh, Professor, you are a very avid uh, advocate for the uh, Chinese Medicine Hospital. The Hong Kong government is also uh, trying to establish a Chinese Medicine Testing and Accreditation Center. How would these establishments become, or make Hong Kong to become a center for Chinese medicine in the world? I think the Chinese Medicine Hospital will be a flagship in education, mm. in the Chinese medicine service, and also in the product development. I think that flagship, not just for Hong Kong, I think it can serve for the Big Bay area and also cover the other countries, which is a very unique place Hong Kong can do. Hong Kong can work in closely with mainland China, with the central government, and also working with different uh, institutes in the world mm -hmm. to promote, to developing those of the Chinese medicine and let it spread in the other countries. At a meeting on March 6, 2021, uh, with the national political advisors from the education, medical and health sectors President Xi Jinping said that China should prioritize the preservation and development of uh, TCM with steps to establish a service system, a service model, management pattern, and pattern for the training of talents. What roles do you think, Professor, Hong Kong has as a bridge between China and the rest of the world on the development of uh, TCM? I think nowadays, Hong Kong has a very good position to compromise Chinese medicine with existing Western medicine systems. Based on that system's integration can build a model. Hong Kong is a very good place to develop such a model because it has a very easily, very uh, close connection with mainland China and also connect with the world. Yes, Hong Kong, yeah. you know, uh, traditionally has been the uh, melting pot of uh, East and West culture. Yeah. Now it will be a melting pot of East and West medicine. The benefits from both sides, from the very beauty part, and develop a new medical systems. Mm -hmm. And then those systems could be a model, serve not just Hong Kong, can serve all the part of the world. How do you think Hong Kong can benefit from the development of a TCM? I think that the spirit of the business is to how serve how to serve the community, how to serve the public. For the Chinese medicine, you can find many of the patients, many of the community, they have the unmet medical needs. Mm -hmm. That means those of the audience, those of the patients, 
they cannot get the satisfied treatment from existing Western medicine treatment systems. Mm. So the patient has a needs to be there. That means we have the market to be there. The market needs to be developed. Mm. The funding agency, the company do more to develop the Chinese medicine. In terms of the Chinese medicine, new drugs. Drug can be a very big business. Very big business because you can consider that the Ling Fa Qing one, one mm. of the drugs used for COVID-19 COVID, yeah. that just be used by the in China and the Hong Kong, uh, mainland China and Hong Kong. But if we, you can, you can imagine, if this medicine can be applied worldwide, mm. that's a huge business. Another one, I think the Chinese medicine service model, mm -hmm. because we okay. see the medicine is one issue, we advocate the individualized service for the patients. That's another huge business chance. Professor Ben, what advice would you give to young people who want to be a Chinese medicine professional or are interested in building a thriving business in the Chinese medicine industry? So for the young generation, my suggestion is working hard, study hard, and serve the communities. Thank you, Professor, a for pleasure. this uh, mind-opening advice to our young people. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Friday Beyond Spotlight. We have with us today Professor Ben Zhao Xiang. Who is Professor Ben behind the spotlight? What made him who he is today? For this segment of our Beyond Spotlight story, we ask our guests to bring along an item that is especially dear to them with significant meaning that personifies their lion rock spirit and has helped to shape who they are today. Professor Ben, could you show us the item and share your unique story with us? I do have the poems want to share with us. We have the poem which is uh, I like very much. It's uh, originally coming from the Buddhist temple in Chengdu. It shows that the 看了就做，做了便放，放了便了，了了有何不了？嗯，会生于觉，觉生于思，思生于自在，生生还是无生。Mm. Which give uh, give me lots of the inspiring, lots of the thought in the practice in the daily lives. You can see we need to have a very quick decision. Just do it. So we need to have a very quick actions too. Many times we make decisions, but actions follow very slowly, which is very important. I can share with you a story with you that when I to the uh, doctors as an emergency unit in mainland China. That times we uh, see the patients in emergency unit. That time we use uh, both Chinese and Western medicine mm -hmm. and drugs. We don't have too much time to think about how to deal with the question. We need to quickly find a solution for the patients, which is very, very important, which helped me to form a strategy in our daily life, in our works. So you need to have those of the quick decision, quick actions. Quick action. Yeah, that's very important. Quick decision, quick action, and move along. Yeah. This is exactly what our line rock spirit is all about. I agree. Well, Professor, do yeah. you have any real life stories that you can share with us in how to practice your philosophy? I do have the story, which is my patient. It's coming to see me around uh, 20 years ago in our clinics. Okay. He suffered from very serious uh, insomnia. He's uh, he coming from medical professional. You know, Hong Kong medical professional have very uh, good supply everything. He see the doctors, uh, including Chinese medicine doctor and Western medicine doctors. And so then, your patient was a doctor himself? He's a nurse. Oh, he's a nurse. He's a nurse, okay. yeah, in the hospital. Regularly, we are asking why they have the insomnia, 
what's the difference, what's the major issues to prescribe the, the formulation to the patient. Second week, he's coming back. Mm. They tell me his complaints still be there. Mm -hmm. He still suffer from the serious uh, insomnia. So normally we prescribe the drugs for the patients, but this patient, I did not prescribe drugs. I prescribed this one oh. for the patients. So after I got her reasons, I haven't prescribed the herbs for the patients, just prescribed this one and uh, explain the reason and why, how to deal with these with the issues. It uh, seems to be her understand what I'm mm. talking about. I left the, the consultation room, my students are curious about you, you did not prescribe yeah. herbs, just a uh, poem. I see, let me see that is the effectiveness. After around two months later, the patient is coming back, mm. totally refreshed, oh, no. changed. In, in fact, I did not remember the uh -huh. patient. Mm -hmm. They told me, you forgot me? <laughs> yeah, I say, I tried to uh, remember, he told me the case. And he then he makes this frame at home to mm. look at as her philosophy. I think that's a very um, unique one that in our daily life we need to try to find ways to dealing our dealing with ourselves. To some things need to put down, some things need to have a ways to reduce our stress. This is very important. I can share with you a, another story. Okay. During the, the fifth wave of the COVID-19, you know, that times uh, Hong Kong is uh, at a critical moment. Every day, the patient's number increased dramatically, very high. That times we uh, have uh, some of the sort of the pressures because uh, we have a ten, 10 clinic in the Baptist University Chinese medicine networks. The patients come in uh, to see uh, the help from the, for the COVID because of some family members suffer from that virus. We need to make a very quick decision to see whether we can provide help for them. And also we need to have the daily uh, operation for the normal patients. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Quickly, we discuss internally. That's a very critical moment for Hong Kong. I think uh, everybody understands that times the situation is worse than SARS situation. Because, so we take quickly make a decision. We need to provide support to those quarantine patients. And then we report to the university and uh, our senior manager of university support us a lot. So we quickly open the second day mm. for the telemedicine. That time telemedicine concept in Hong Kong is not as popular as nowadays. I can remember at that time it was uh, quite a uh, groundbreaking decision. Yeah. You know, some people say that uh, how can you prescribe something without seeing the patient uh, or touching the patients? Yeah. Especially, you know, the Chinese medicine doctor yeah, you have need to, feel, to the pulse. Yeah. feel the pulse. That's a very critical moment. So we say, even we don't have the pulse, but let's ask them more about mm -hmm. the patient's history, about patient's symptoms. Let's compensate mm -hmm. because of the no pulse touching elements. Mm -hmm. We found at last it works. Okay. It really helped the yeah. patients. It did. It did. Yeah. And uh, it did a lot of good to the Hong Kong community. We uh, do are proud of our team, because our doctors, our supporting teams, our university can help in this uh, fifth wave pandemic, mm -hmm. really help the society. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ben. I think uh, uh, we rely on you to continue to uh, break new frontiers for TCM. We will working more. That's working together. Yeah. Now we come to one of our favorite segments, the rapid fire questions. I will be asking you, Professor Ben, some quick and fun questions, okay. and you just answer them, whatever comes up to your mind first. Okay? Okay. 
What is your favorite hobby? Hiking. What is your favorite Hong Kong food? Apple pie from Saigon. What is the last book you read? Last book I read about the Xin Luo Pu Ti. It's similar like the Buddha. Who is someone you admire? My, my parents, yeah. And also another uh, uh, figure which is very important for me is uh, Chinese medicine doctor in Han Dynasty, we call it Zhang Zhongjin. Mm. What is your favorite place in Hong Kong? The mountains. I like, like the Hong Kong's mountains. What is your proudest moment? My son graduated from the University okay. of the mm -hmm. Toronto. What is the nicest thing someone has said to you before? One of my students coming uh, back to visit me from mainland China, look at my hair, say, Hey, why you dye the, those the hair? I then, say, it's a real one. Okay. It's a real one. What was the last thing you searched online? Often drugs developing by, approved by the FDA. Mm -hmm. What would be the title of your autobiography? Doctor. Uh, what are the qualities you admire most about your parents? Um, my father always told me that insist. Insist. Persistent. Persistence. Never give up. What advice would you give to your younger self? Uh, don't be nervous. What is your biggest fear? Lost a connection to the family, to friends. How can your profession influence the future? I hope that my profession in Chinese medicine can reform the Hong Kong's healthcare, healthcare systems mm -hmm. and also apply to the other uh, countries in the world. How will Hong Kong look in five years' time? Always believing Hong Kong have a very bright future. Professor Ben, can you please share with us your suggestions or well wishes for Hong Kong? My well wishes, let's open the ball, fly to the everywhere in the world. Let's have the fun. Thank you, Professor, for joining us uh, on this uh, episode. We have learned so much from you. Thank you all for joining us on Friday Beyond Spotlight. See you next time. Professor Ben, can you check me up and see how am I today? Sure. Let's check the pulse first. Okay. Yeah. And this one. Professor, you look very serious. Yeah, I'm thinking about the pulse. It sounds like the 18 years old, a very young pulse. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, it must be tennis. And my wife's soup. Wow, wife's soup. Must be the secret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>